Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's presentation. Are you ready for a chilling and heated discussion? That's right. Today we are diving into the world of temperature-related emergencies, heat stroke, frostbite, and hypothermia. I promise it's not going to be a frosty session, so let's turn up the heat and learn some valuable information that will help us in our nursing practice. Temperature-related emergencies can be tricky, and as nurses, we play a vital role in recognizing and managing these conditions. So buckle up, grab your thermometers, and let's explore the fascinating world of heat stroke, frostbite, and hypothermia. By the end of this presentation, you'll be well-equipped to handle any temperature extremes that come your way. Let's look at the objectives for this presentation. We will define heat stroke, frostbite, and hypothermia understand the risk factors and symptoms associated with each condition, compare and contrast the management strategies for each condition, and examine nursing interventions and rationales for patients with heat stroke, frostbite, and hypothermia. Before we dive into the details of managing these temperature-related emergencies, let's first define them and gain a clearer understanding of the conditions we are facing. Heat stroke is the most serious form of heat illness, occurring when the body's temperature regulation fails due to prolonged exposure to high temperatures. This results in a core body temperature of 104 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 degrees Celsius, or higher. Heat stroke is a medical emergency that demands immediate attention, as it can lead to multi-organ failure, brain damage, or even death if left untreated. Common signs of heat stroke include high body temperature, altered mental state, hot and dry skin, rapid heart rate, and seizures. Frostbite is an injury to body tissues caused by exposure to extreme cold. It occurs when skin and the underlying tissues freeze, which can damage cells and blood vessels. Frostbite typically affects the extremities, such as fingers, toes, nose, and ears, but can also impact cheeks, chin, and other areas. If left untreated, frostbite can lead to severe tissue damage and even amputation. Symptoms of frostbite include numbness, pale or waxy looking skin, and hard or frozen feeling skin. Hypothermia is a potentially life-threatening condition that occurs when the body's core temperature drops below 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 35 degrees Celsius. This can happen due to prolonged exposure to cold temperatures, cold water immersion, or inadequate clothing in cold environments. Hypothermia can impair the body's normal functioning, leading to confusion, organ failure, and eventually death if not treated promptly. Indications of hypothermia include shivering, slow or shallow breathing, drowsiness, and slurred speech. In order to effectively manage heat stroke, frostbite, and hypothermia, it's crucial to understand their risk factors and symptoms. This knowledge enables us to recognize these conditions early on, which is vital for initiating timely interventions and improving patient outcomes. Let's discuss the risk factors and symptoms for each condition. Some common risk factors for heat stroke include high environmental temperatures, high humidity, intense physical activity, dehydration, and certain medications. Elderly individuals, young children, and people with chronic illnesses are also at higher risk for heat stroke. The symptoms can vary, but typically include a high body temperature, hot and dry skin, rapid pulse, confusion, agitation, and unconsciousness. Remember, heat stroke is a medical emergency and requires immediate attention. Risk factors for frostbite include extreme cold temperatures, wet conditions, and inadequate clothing or protection from the cold. People with reduced blood circulation, such as those with diabetes or peripheral arter artery disease, are at an increased risk. Frostbite symptoms include numbness, tingling, or pain in the affected area, skin discoloration, either white, gray, or blue, and the formation of blisters in severe cases. Prompt treatment is essential to prevent permanent tissue damage. Risk factors for hypothermia include exposure to cold temperatures, cold water immersion, wet clothing, and alcohol or drug use, which can impair the body's ability to maintain its core temperature. Symptoms of hypothermia include shivering, confusion, slurred speech, drowsiness, weak pulse, and slow or shallow breathing. Like heat stroke, hypothermia is a potentially life-threatening condition that requires immediate intervention. Oh. 
Now that we've covered the risk factors and symptoms of heat stroke, frostbite, and hypothermia, it's time to discuss the general management strategies for each condition. Keep in mind that although these conditions share some similarities, their management differs significantly based on the specific challenges they present. Let's examine the key management strategies for each. For heat stroke, rapid cooling is the top priority. We need to lower the patient's body temperature as quickly as possible. This can be achieved using various cooling techniques such as ice packs, cool water immersion, or evaporative cooling with water and fans. Ice packs packed around the groin and under the armpits is one of the quickest methods. Supportive care is essential, including monitoring vital signs, maintaining adequate hydration, and addressing any complications such as seizures or organ dysfunction. For frostbite, gradual rewarming is crucial. We want to rewarm the affected tissue without causing further injury. This is typically done by immersing the affected area in warm water, 40 to 42 degrees Celsius, or 104 to 108 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 30 minutes. We need to be careful to prevent burning of the already damaged tissue, so we don't want to use water that is hotter than that, and please don't use a hairdryer. Pain management is important, as rewarming can be painful. Administering analgesics and providing emotional support can help alleviate patient discomfort. Once rewarming is complete, dress the affected area with sterile dressings to prevent infection and elevate to reduce swelling. For hypothermia, gradual rewarming is also the goal. We need to raise the patient's core body temperature slowly and carefully to avoid complications such as cardiac arrhythmias. Use passive and active external rewarming techniques like warm blankets, heated air, and warm water immersion. In severe cases, consider active internal rewarming methods like warmed IV fluids or extracorporeal circulation. Monitor vital signs closely and address any complications such as respiratory or cardiac issues. As nurses, our role in managing patients with heat stroke, frostbite, and hypothermia is crucial. Our interventions are vital for providing timely and appropriate care, and understanding the nursing rationales behind these interventions enables us to make informed decisions in emergency situations. Let's examine the nursing interventions for each condition in more detail and discuss their rationales. As mentioned earlier, rapid cooling is the priority in heat stroke management. Nursing interventions include applying ice packs to the patient's neck, armpits, and groin, using cooling blankets or misting with water and fanning. Lowering the body temperature quickly helps prevent further organ damage and reduces the risk of complications. Monitoring the patient's fluid status and administering intravenous fluids as needed is crucial. Hydration helps to maintain adequate circulation and electrolyte balance, which is vital for proper organ function. For frostbite, gradually rewarming the affected area by immersing it in warm water is essential. Avoiding direct heat sources minimizes tissue damage and promotes blood flow to the affected area. After rewarming, applying sterile dressings and elevating the affected area is crucial. Proper wound care helps to prevent infection and further tissue damage, while elevation reduces swelling and improves circulation. For hypothermia, employing both passive and active external rewarming techniques, as well as active internal rewarming methods in severe cases, is essential. Raising the core body temperature slowly helps to avoid complications like arrhythmias. Monitoring the patient's vital signs, especially heart rate and rhythm, and providing supportive care as needed is critical. Close monitoring and prompt interventions help to manage complications and improve the patient's overall condition. Let's look at three different patients who have been rescued from different environments and each presents unique temperature-related emergencies. First, we have Laura. She's a 35-year-old marathon runner who had collapsed during a race on a hot summer day. Laura is presenting with signs of heat stroke, including a high body temperature of 104 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 degrees Celsius, a rapid pulse of 130 beats per minute, and altered mental status, including confusion and agitation. Her skin is hot and dry to the touch, and she appears to be in significant distress. 
as a nurse your priority for laura would be to initiate rapid cooling measures you would remove any excess clothing apply ice packs to her neck armpits and groin and utilize cooling blankets if available you might also mist her with water and use a fan to create evaporative cooling simultaneously you would closely monitor her fluid status administer intravenous fluids to maintain proper hydration and ensure her electrolyte balance is preserved additionally you would be prepared to address any complications that may arise such as seizures or organ dysfunction next we have daniel a 42 year old hiker who got lost during a winter trek and developed frostbite on his fingers and toes Daniel's affected extremities appear discolored with areas of white, gray, and blue skin. He complains of numbness, tingling, and pain in these regions. In this situation, your primary nursing intervention for Daniel would be to rewarm his frostbitten fingers and toes by immersing them in warm water at a temperature of 104 to 108 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 to 42 degrees Celsius, for 15 to 30 minutes. You would avoid direct heat sources such as heating pads, hair dryers, or hot water bottles to prevent burns or excessive tissue damage. During the rewarming process, you would administer analgesics for pain management and provide emotional support to help him cope with the discomfort. After rewarming, you would apply sterile dressings to the affected areas, separating fingers and toes to prevent maceration, and elevate the limbs to promote circulation, minimize swelling, and prevent infection. Lastly, we have James, a 60-year-old homeless man found unconscious in a snowbank and diagnosed with severe hypothermia. James's core body temperature is 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Celsius, and he exhibits symptoms of hypothermia such as shivering, confusion, slurred speech, drowsiness, a very weak pulse, and slow or shallow breathing. Your priority for James would be to gradually rewarm him using both passive and active external rewarming techniques. You would remove any wet clothing and wrap him in warm, dry blankets. You might also use heated air or warm water immersion if the situation allows. In more severe cases, active internal rewarming methods like warmed intravenous fluids or extracorporeal circulation might be considered. You would closely monitor James's vital signs, especially his heart rate and rhythm, and provide supportive care as needed to manage any complications, such as respiratory or cardiac issues. These scenarios emphasize the importance of understanding the unique management strategies for heat stroke, frostbite, and hypothermia. By applying the appropriate nursing interventions and rationales, we can provide the best possible care for our patients, like Laura, Daniel, and James, and improve their outcomes. Well, we've reached the end of our presentation on comparing and contrasting the emergency management of patients with heat stroke, frostbite, and hypothermia. I hope you found it informative and engaging. Let's take a moment to recap the key points we've covered today. We began by defining heat stroke, frostbite, and hypothermia, and discussed how they can result from extreme temperature exposures. We explored the common risk factors and symptoms associated with each condition, emphasizing the importance of early recognition and intervention. We provided an overview of the different management strategies for each condition, highlighting the need for tailored care depending on the specific diagnosis. We looked into nursing interventions and rationales for each condition, demonstrating how evidence-based practice can lead to better patient outcomes. And finally, we looked at scenarios that illustrated how the management strategies we discussed can be applied in real-life situations involving all three conditions. As you continue your nursing journey, Always remember the importance of understanding the unique needs and management strategies for patients experiencing heat stroke, frostbite, or hypothermia. Providing individualized care and applying appropriate nursing rationales can make a significant difference in the lives of our patients. Keep up the good work and stay prepared for any emergency situation that comes your way.